Assalamu alaikum to all of you. I am Varda Liakar and today we will learn the basic neuroanatomy of the midbrain. Let's see. This is the midbrain. It forms the upper part of the brain stem. It is present in posterior cranial fossa, bones and medulla oblongata are also present in posterior cranial fossa. Midbrain connects the bones and cerebellum with the forebrain. This is the posterior aspect of the midbrain. You can see the four colliculi, two superior colliculi and two inferior colliculi. Superior brachium connects the superior colliculi with the lateral geniculate body and inferior brachium connects the inferior colliculi with the medial geniculate body. Superior colliculi relate with visual system and inferior colliculi relates with hearing. Two nerves emerge from the midbrain. Third cranial nerve which is also known as the oculomotor nerve and the fourth cranial nerve which is called the trochlear nerve. Third cranial nerve emerge at the level of the superior colliculus and the fourth cranial nerve emerge at the level of the inferior colliculus. Let's see the parts of the midbrain. Parts of the midbrain, crest cerebri, which is also known as base, tegmentum and tectum. Okay. Let's see in this diagram, this is crest cerebri. Okay. And this is tegmentum. Crest cerebri and tegmentum are separated by the substantia nigra. Okay. In between, this is the cavity of the cerebral aqueduct which is filled with CSF posterior to the cerebral aqueduct you can see the tectum if the cerebral aqueduct compress it produces the hydrocephalus if the cerebral aqueduct block then the CSF will be accumulated in the lateral and the third ventricle because cerebral aqueduct connects the third and the fourth ventricle if this will block and it will produce the lesion in the midbrain. Now we will see the midbrain at different levels at the level of superior colliculus and at the level of inferior colliculus. At the level of superior colliculus you can see the superior colliculus and at the level of inferior colliculus here you will see the inferior colliculus. Cerebral aqueduct is present at both levels. Substantia nigra is also present at both levels. Frontopontine fibers, corticospinal and the corticonuclear fibers and temporopontine fibers are also present at both levels. Trigeminal laminiscus, spinal laminiscus and medial laminiscus, these three laminiscus are present at both levels. Okay, it is at the level of superior colliculus. Now see at the level of inferior colliculus these same structures. At the level of inferior colliculus, this is inferior colliculus and this is substantia nigra. Okay, temporopontine fibers, corticospinal and the corticonuclear fibers and the frontopontine fibers. I have already told these all fibers are present at both levels. Substantia nigra is also present at both levels. Lateral laminiscus. Trigeminal laminiscus and spinal laminiscus and medial laminiscus. In, at the level of inferior colliculus, four laminiscus are present. But at the level of superior colliculus, lateral laminiscus was absent. Okay. Medial longitudinal fasciculus is also present at both levels. At the level of inferior colliculus, you can see the decussation of the superior cerebellar peduncle. But at the level of inferior at the level of inferior colliculus, you can see the decussation of superior cerebellar peduncle. But at the level of superior colliculus, you will see the decussation of the rubrospinal tract and you will also see the red nucleus. Okay. And oculomotor nucleus is present at the level of superior colliculus and the trochlear nucleus is present at the level of inferior colliculus. If this oculomotor nucleus is involved, in any lesion, then it will produce the ipsilateral paralysis of the levator, pal levator palpebrae superioris, superior 
inferior and the middle rectus muscles and the inferior oblique muscles these muscles will be paralyzed if the oculomotor nerve will involve and the pupil will not construct dilation of pupil will be dilated or okay if trochlear nerve is involved let's see this is the trochlear nerve if trochlear nerve is involved then it will produce the contralateral paralysis superior oblique muscles of the eye 